So welcome everybody to um, Discover North Macedonia's Branic Great Variety with Zvonko Hersek. Uh, just a little bit about the webinars first of all. So my name is Lydia Harrison. I'm a Master of Wine and Educator at WSCT School London and I also organise our events programme which um, during lockdown obviously we had to put online so we've been doing webinars and the school is now reopen, um, but we're continuing them because they've been so successful and because people have still have limitations on travel. So it's a way to bring some wine education to you in the comfort of your, your own home. But uh, the school is back open and throughout we've also been doing online courses so you can have a look at our website and do um, any of our WCT qualifications online as well. And it's my uh, pleasure to introduce uh, Zvonko Hersek, who is the wine educator at, well, the company's called Wine Educator, but it's the educational arm of the Tikves Winery in North Macedonia, which is also known as the Republic of Macedonia. And he is going to take you on a journey of this wonderful grape variety this evening. So Zvonko, over to you. Thank you very much, Olivia. And uh, thank you to WST School London and to you for giving us opportunity to present uh, our wine region, our country, our very important grape variety Branets. And uh, this evening we, for the first time, we try to to explain and pass through the some uh, short summary here, just to to be the basic information about the where we are where is uh, our country and wine region located, our wine routes, uh, shortly about the wine history, some facts of production and uh, viticulture, about the quantity of production and the uh, importance of brown is great variety. Main wine regions, Barda River Valley is uh, one of, uh, I like to say, uh, main wine artery here in the Balkan Peninsula our uh, very important uh, wine region. Then very shortly about the classification and comparison with uh, European Union wine law. Then we come to the Brunets variety uh, as uh, a plant and with viticulture characteristics. And after that, we will pass to the Brunets wines, uh, characteristic of wines made from brownets and some wine styles which is actually producing here in North Macedonia and in the, some different wine districts. So for the very beginning I would like to, this is the map of Europe as you know, but I see that we have a lot of guests which come from Mexico or from states and some other parts of the world. So it will be good to show where exactly the North Macedonia is located in the southeast of Europe. And as you can see more closer, it's not so far for the famous wine regions in France, Italy, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and so on. Uh, I mean, that's mean not too much, but we are not in some other part of the world. We are very close in, in the Europe. Uh, actually, if we go more deeper, we are in the Balkan part of the Balkan Peninsula, which is natural northern border is made from River Sava, which flow up in the River Danube and further into the Black Sea. This I made a little mistake because the Danube go over there and the Romania also become a part of the Balkan Peninsula and this is very huge wine region. But we are talking about the North Macedonia. So the, our closest Neighbors are Serbia from the north and Kosovo, Bulgaria east, Greece from south, and Albania from west. Hi there. Uh, so, and here is Montenegro, which is uh, important about uh, Branet's grape variety. We will talk later about uh, the origin uh, of uh, Branet's grape variety. So, just to, to know that it's not so far from North Macedonia. Uh, going further, this is political map and uh, further the Balkan Peninsula is divided to the Western Balkan and Eastern Balkan. As you can see, the North Macedonia is in the center, in the heart of the Balkan Peninsula and it's very important and strategic position. Uh, how in political, uh, also in the wine uh, industry, 
and the history of uh, spreading the wine culture because we all know that wine culture was spreading from east from the mountain mountain Caucasus and go to the west to the ancient Greece Romans and uh, Gauls and so on but we are not talking too much about the history uh, going further which is interesting what I find that actually Balkan Peninsula lies in the seventh it's surrounded by seven seas it looks like some fairy tale uh, actually it's uh, really seven seas Adriatic Ionian Britonian Agency, Trekian Sea, Sea of Marmara, and Black Sea. Uh, all these Mediterranean seas has a Mediterranean influence on the on the countries on the Balkan Peninsula. And for uh, North Macedonia, for us, it's very important agency because uh, it's uh, responsible for Mediterranean hard influence uh, to our country. Or if you can see here is Varda River Valley, which is flow up into the agency, and here is a plain, actually 50, 60 kilometers, uh, from where is penetrated Mediterranean Sea and Mediterranean climate. Sorry, Mediterranean climate, and we have very unique climate. You will see later about uh, the climate aspects on the viticulture. Okay, about the history of Macedonia, it's fine, in North Macedonia, in Macedonia, uh, it's fine, some uh, art, uh, artifacts uh, in 13th century in Bronze Age, and it's considered that it's used for, uh, for wine, but what is actually proved, and it's uh, fine, it was 60 and second, between 6th and 2nd century be before uh, Christ, uh, it's find actually this what uh, made from bronze and uh, with the role to mix uh, wine and uh, water together with some plants, uh, dry plants, in order to make more wines palatable because uh, production of ancient wines and uh, the taste of ancient wines uh, are so pungent. So this is find this uh, what it find uh, near the village Trebenishta. Uh, and uh, this shows that uh, actually spreading and the wine for the long uh, history of wine culture and wine production uh, here in uh, our territory of, of our country, North Macedonia today. If we go further uh, between first and 13th century, this is pretty much a uh, long period. It's rise of Christianity, which impact on the on the production of the wines and the consumption of the wines, as well the Roman and Byzantine period. I usually want to say the Roman wine renaissance, because the Romans uh, they find here good soil for wine production for wine consumption, but uh, they uh, really do uh, develop this uh, production of wines. They start separate black grapes from white grapes by making uh, red wines, white wines, and so on, and also hardly trading into the region between the Constantinople and the Rome. There was a famous way via Ignatia, named by the Ignatio uh, emperor. Uh, and Macedonian, in that time, Macedonian wines was a part of, of trading and uh, was finished on the, on the Roma market as well in the, into the Constantinople on the east. Uh, then it's come a little bit stagnation period from 14th century uh, to early 20th century. Under the Ottoman Empire, Muslim religions uh, don't promote uh, drinking the alcohol, so the vast majority of the wines uh, were uproot and uh, replant with uh, wines for the table uh, grape for, for eating. And uh, but in that period, actually, the Orthodox Church uh, and the monks uh, protect the wine production using in uh, in the mass, in the mass, uh, like a part of uh, their uh, religion and for their religion. So uh, in that period, we still uh, keep the the wine production and wine growing for grapes and. This region, and after that is coming to Loxera as a 
is a huge problem for whole Europe. And uh, this period, it's not so good to remember. But uh, then uh, Macedonia, Republic of Macedonia is a part of uh, Yugoslavia in 20th century. Uh, after the Second World War, it's uh, become the fruit basket for, for the, let's say, for the Yugoslavia then, uh, because a lot of uh, uh, increasing of development of viticulture and agriculture at all was based actually in, in the Republic of Macedonia. Uh, for the sample, I will, I will tell that maybe in 80s, uh, around the 80s, Macedonia was participate with 80% of wine production in uh, whole Yugoslavia. But in that period, the quantity was much important than the quality. Uh, even then, some uh, vignerons, uh, wine growers, uh, achieve awards for the higher production of, of the grapes. Uh, but Vranets in that period, uh, even it's uh, high productive, they offer the, the, the slightly higher, uh, let's say, quality than other grape varieties in production. We are talking about production about uh, 25 tons per hectare, let's say. And then the things changes a little bit and come to the end of 20th century and to developments, modern viticulture, modern winemaking for what we're talking later. Uh, in this presentation. So, we're going about some facts uh, of wine production. Total vineyards, we are not so big wine region. Total vineyards are 33,000, as you see, uh, but under the, the, the wine grape varieties, uh, it's 28,000 uh, hectares. Almost 74 registered wineries and 20,000 grape growers, which show showing the pretty much fragmented production of uh, of grapes of grape growing here, uh, that impacts uh, sometimes on the on the quality of of the wines. But uh, there's a a lot of projects to educate the grape growers and to follow the, all their activities in the vineyard. So in order to protect uh, the, the quality of the grapes, because in, as we know, all the wine is, is born in, in vineyard and the quality of the grapes is very important. 15% uh, is table grapes and 85% is made wine grapes varieties for production of wine, 125 tons of grapes. Production in bottle increasing to 50% and in bulk is 45%. Then we have a 5% in begging box. The begging box need to say that uh, improve in quality from year to year. So it's not something which uh, we, can, we, we need to avoid. Actually, the begging box is one a good uh, uh, package for, for the wine. But when talking about the regarding the oxidation of the wine, so total production 91 millions and 50% uh, is uh, white and approximately 50% it's red wines. Sales export mostly export oriented country 85% and only 50% finish at home. Sales is done in 38 countries. Wine consumption per capita is 10 liter, and it's second export commodity, agricultural commodity uh, import, which is export in, uh, from North Macedonia. Uh, when we're talking about the consumption per capita, we need to, to I need to tell you that it's not counted the small producers uh, for home production, and they also produce and consume pretty much uh, higher quantity, but. Uh, I, I think that uh, probably this consumption will move near closer to the 20 liters per capita, almost almost double, let's say. Top 10 export destination in bottle, Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia, Slovenia, this neighboring and country from ex Yugoslavia, China, Russia, Montenegro, Germany, Kosovo, USA, uh, USA and other. And when we're talking about the bulk wine, the Germany is a huge market for, for, our, for our bulk wine. 
Serbia, Croatia, Slovak, Czech, Canada, Bulgaria, Romania. As you can see, the Montenegro is here as well. But uh, this uh, actually, this uh, information has come from the official customs of North Macedonia. So definitely we export some bulk wine from Montenegro. And I don't think that is white one. However, okay, and now we come to the wine region. This is the map of Yugoslavia and, oh, sorry, North Macedonia. And on the, as you see, we have one region at all, which is uh, Macedonia wine region. And then is split on the Western part with 1,800 hectares. And this uh, Western part encompassed six uh, wine districts. Then in central, we have a central part, central wine region, which is also called uh, Varda River Valley, and this encompass seven wine districts, and east uh, wine region with 100, uh, with 1,700 uh, hectares, three wine districts, and in total we have 16 wine districts. Much important is the Varda River Valley and the Central wine region. Uh, I, when I say important, I don't think I don't want to say that uh, the other is less important. But here we see a huge potential uh, for the wines and huge potential for developing of agriculture. Of course, western part has uh, some other styles production of wines. Uh, eastern part some other more refreshing, and so on. So. Uh, when we presenting the wine districts, as you can see on the relief map, it's usually uh, based the wine districts into the uh, basins, into the basins surrounding with the mountain, and on the foothills of the mountains are the actually the best vineyard. But this is not something new because mostly of the vineyards in the world are usually based. Uh, on the some foothills of, of, of mountains or hilly, uh, because this is specific terroir for uh, and very good for wine production. Uh, this is Tikvesh wine region. The, we start with much important uh, wine district uh, with twelve thousand thirty hundred hectares, and most of the wineries are concentrate uh, there in Tikvesh. Uh, then we go from the north, the Skopje wine district, offering more refreshing wines, Veles wine district as well, similar. And uh, we have on the south, as you can see here, we have in this, uh, sorry, in this we have, uh, in this part, we have a canyon here uh, from which is blowing the Mediterranean uh, climate. But this wine district, Gevgelia Valandovo, is actually part of the of the Thessaloniki plain, uh, which is everything flat until the sea and it's much higher influence of the Mediterranean climate. The next three uh, wine districts is of Cepole and Pochani and Strumica and Radovish. Uh, that is a bit slightly smaller impact of the Varda River Valley, but it's still high to be a part of this central wine region, which is much important for us. Uh, about the climate, uh, we have very unique climate here, especially for Varda, Varda River Valley. As you can see, it's 50, maybe 60 kilometers plain from the Aegean Sea. And from the south, it penetrates the Mediterranean climate. And as you can see, this Mediterranean climate is strongly passing through the canyon, and actually the canyon named Demircapia, or uh, literally translated it will be Iron Gate, is act like a huge fan and blowing the Mediterranean hot wind into the valley and especially in the Tikvesh area, because we see that it's much important and we have the first impact of the Mediterranean climate, which has come here, and we have a very high mountain so there with some uh, cooling effects and we went further to see other climate aspects. From the north we have a continental climate uh, and uh, impact of the continental climate so they uh, two climates meet together something uh, let's say closer 
into the Veles and into the, the southern part of the Veles wine district and the northern part of the of the Tikvash area. If we see, uh, uh, if we check under the climate official climate zone, this is the border where it's passing C3 climate zone and C2 climate climate zone north from from this border, and what they mean, that means that C3 zone encompass the wine regions from, let's say, Puglia, Basilicata, Calabria, Sicilia, Sardinia, Corsica, south of Spain as well, from Douro River, south into the Portugal. Here, I think the Spirat and Penedes is also part of C3. But however, C2 is the northern part this is the climate zone which encompass the famous wine regions from the Italy and also the, the vast majority of ex Yugoslav uh, countries. Nowadays, uh, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, you see Montenegro is in this part, Croatia, and so on. So we come back and uh, to the to this map and to explain more about the climate. As you can see. The relief, the Macedonia, North Macedonia is mostly mountains, uh, mountain uh, country, approximately 75% are mountains and with peaks to 2000 meters and more. It's really nice to, to visit us and who, who like uh, hiking uh, to the, our mountains, of course, drink and eat very nice gastronomy. You are all welcomed. Uh, here also we have a mountain, uh, mountainous climate, which uh, make more complex uh, climates uh, into the Varda River Valley. And that's not all. We also have Vardaritz breeze, which actually acts as a mistral in Southern Rhone, uh, because uh, they have all the components, uh, I mean, from the way it's Mistral, definitely because it's going from the northwest to the southeast, and uh, it's pulling actually the vineyards into the hot days, and which is much important because we have a high temperature into the summer, approximately can reach 40, 45 uh, degrees. Uh, so, but in the harvest, we also uh, can have uh, heavy rains uh, or uh, just summer rains. Rains. This wind uh, really helps to, to dry the grapes, uh, and uh, we don't need to use actually fungici fungicides, which it make much easier for organic uh, wine production in the Valda River Valley at all, like a wine region. So that will be about the climate, about the soils. Uh, I'll just mention that it's a very huge diversity of soils. And as you can see, there's a mountain, a uh, lot of mountains and uh, in the sub, uh, subsoil, it's uh, often you can find uh, some volcanic soil, especially here at the foothills of the, of the Kozhuf, which we know that impact somehow not with geological uh, minerals, but impact on the taste of the wine as well. On the higher altitude, the grapes are more smaller, so we have a more polyphenols, we have more anthocyanins, tannins, and so on, when we don't have too much pulp. Uh, and that will be about the climate, about the classification very briefly from the right side is actually European Union wine law. We have a table wine at the base from where we come. This is uh, for the, the grapes come from the huge wine region everywhere in the North Macedonia. Then we have uh, VGI or wine with geographical indication, which is equal to European uh, Union, sorry, to European Union as PGI, protected geographical indication. That means that has some restriction in wine production and as well in the grape production. And uh, it still come from the beer area, uh, grapes come from the bigger area, but it's not like uh, from the table wine, it's come from particular uh, wine districts. And then we have uh, wine with control at origin, uh, together with wines with control at and guaranteed origin, which is actually uh, equal with PDO or protected designation of origin 
from European Union wine law. That means that wines come from very small uh, uh, areas and very controlled uh, yield, uh, red, uh, reduction in the yield. There's a higher percentage of alcohol and as well permitted and uh, which grape varieties are permitted in this production as well and in the winery some, process, uh, some processes uh, which need to be uh, provided during the, the production. So this should be reflected to more quality wines. But uh, I also need to mention that under this appellation, the enologists usually have uh, uh, more untied hands to experiment and to, to work with some other grape varieties or with some uh, uh, grapes from other wine regions. And that not means that quality will be lower. Okay, about the classification. This now we're going with the Branets as a grape variety. The name Branets as pronounced in Montenegro, Serbia, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, and the uh, Branets uh, we said in North Macedonia. There's also in Kosovo uh, branch, I think. Uh, uh, it is pronounced this grape variety. The name is come from um, actually the synonyms is Vranat Crnički, Vranat Crni, Vranat Sprchljavac. Uh, but the name, uh, the term Vran means black, and etymologic meaning is like a black stallion or black horse uh, because the wines, because of the appearance, of the color of the wines, of its strength and potency. and is considered as, as wines with untamed spirit uh, during even during the production of uh, the Vranis wine. When you come into the winery, every every day uh, you can you can smell the, some other uh, aromas of Vranis how it's developed into the the winery, which is really difficult to 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 say to to cut the 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 production. Say okay, you will look like 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 this what you're offering me at the moment. Okay, this is about the name of Vranets. Uh, viticulture characteristic, uh, uh, it's vigorous and productive. Actually, it's considered by the Professor Nastev that this grape variety is coming in 50s, uh, 1950s in uh, North Macedonia, then in the Republic of Macedonia as a part of, of uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, why? Because after the Second World War, the the whole country was devastated and uh, Macedonia is local uh, is local for good for developing uh, and for developing agriculture so they find the grape variety of runets in print from Montenegro here an experimental vineyard in order to increase the production because this grape variety can produce uh, 20 25 tons per hectare and that's why the wine growers actually love falling in love in this grape variety. Not only reason, but it's good reason to love this uh, this grape variety because it can offer too much quantity. Uh, but also it's shown good when we make some good reduction of this that we uh, achieve a very high quality of the wines. So this love. It became uh, that uh, this grape variety, most of wine growers, most of consumers uh, actually uh, was uh, feel that is uh, ingenious North Macedonian grape variety, which is not, but we will discuss a little bit later about, about uh, that. Uh, early budding, mid uh, budding, mid ripening, uh, ripening, compact bunches, that is not so, uh, so good because, uh, as I mentioned about the, the probably uh, rot uh, in the rainy days and the uh, need to, to find the clone, some adequate clone which can offer more space between the berries. Best results in warm soils and uh, moderate resistance to downy and powdery ridges. It's very su susceptible to uh, rot, especially to great rot, gray, uh, gray rot. Uh, 
here is writing as a botrytis. Actually, we don't have a botrytis uh, here on uh, on the grids because uh, we don't have a climate for developing of botrytis wines and botrytis grapes. And very successful on frost, I think that it was minus 12, where the actual wine uh, and the grape clusters are frozen. Sugar content 20 to 24 grams per liter and acid content between 6 to 7 grams per liter, which uh, showed up to very, very good natural balance for this grape variety. About the parentage, uh, we will see the one parent is actually Zinfandel Primitivo, Tribidac in Croatia and Kratosia as we say here in North Macedonia and Kratosia also in Montenegro. Together with Dulenga, it's with natural cross, it's born Branets. And it is relative with Trnenak, Cerni, Plavac, Mali, very famous from Korčula, Grk, and so on. This is very shortly about the parentage, just to know for, for the uh, guests from the United States that that is actually, uh, let's say, son of Zinfandel. Yeah. Good. Uh, about the origin and Balkan vineyards, very shortly. So it's genius grape variety of Montenegro, and there is planted on 3006 hectares. As you can see here on the, sorry, on the smaller map, uh, this uh, region, uh, wine region is actually Crnicko uh, Polje or Crnica fields. For the period of uh, Yugoslavia, it was actually the military, uh, the military air, air, air base. And uh, now it's uh, vineyards mostly planted with granites, and it's based in the northern part of the Skadar Lake. So here we have a very, very huge impact of the, um, of the lake as well of the Adriatic Sea on this regions, uh, on this region here. It's very close to the capital of Montenegro, Podgorica. Uh, so if the Montenegro is homeland, uh, we can say for the Macedonia that's, for North Macedonia that's its promised land because uh, for Varane is because we have here 10,800 uh, hectares of this uh, grape variety planted uh, through the whole country and uh, gives uh, very good results. Uh, they fit well with uh, our wine regions here. And the other countries in uh, uh, neighboring countries where we can find production in the, of Franes is Kosovo, which near, you can see, participate with 3% of total amount of production of Franes. Uh, uh, North Macedonia is 68, Montenegro 23. Then we have uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina also with 3%, Croatia mostly in the southern part of Croatia and the coastal part, and usually used for blend with Plavac Mali uh, with 2%, and Serbia with 120 hectares small. There are some near the Fruška Gora and uh, in the, some, some vineyards in the no, uh, southern part of, of Serbia also. Uh, total production is of Ranets is actually uh, is planted actually is 15, almost 16,000 hectares. About the winemaking, traditional winemakings and uh, modern winemaking, this is uh, actually the the stone the stone tubes find uh, in Zagrad behind the Marcos Towers in Prilep wine district. There's a few of them, probably 50 of these stone tubes, tubes and they witnesses for long tradition of production uh, of wines. Some of them, not all of them, are used for production of, for crushing the grapes and you see here, it's collecting the, the juice. Uh, but when we're talking about the traditional wine production, 
we need to, to mention that the past it often blends, uh, and last two deca decades the wines are actually um, can be find some varietal uh, wines in traditional production. Uh, usually, when production is, is, is traditional production of uh, of wines, uh, it's three grape varieties, no matter of berry color. One is used for color, the other for flavor, grape variety, and the third one is used for body or concentration, or as we mentioned, the water of of for wine. Of course, wild yeast they in traditional winemaking they don't inoculate selected yeast. And there's a three detectable, let's say, technologies of winemaking. Uh, one is cominature, which means own skins, and it's pretty reductive uh, production. It's the oldest way of production, but it's still widely used. Uh, that means that all the time, uh, wine, most, and wine are with compact, com contact with skins. And uh, after the fermentation, we have a uh, closed, uh, hermetically closed uh, the barrels and uh, resulting wine is very fruity, uh, wines which uh, aromatically uh, looks like uh, Beaujolais or some Italian Nolello, but uh, in difference with this wine, this wine has uh, more sparks on the, on the tongue because the CO2 is actually integrated inside let's say not so high like Frizzante in, in Italy. Then we have a Lacino or in French soutirage process or racking where we have a, one single aeration of wine. Wine is after fermentation is separated from the skins and after one, wine, one uh, month is uh, aerated outside in order from the basket or uh, racking from basket to basket and to make a wine a foam uh, that is considered that this foam uh, it's uh, helping to 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 for uh, avoiding the or to escaping of dividing actually the sulfur and as well the carbon dioxide which is into the wine and we, this wine it can be aged for a year two or three and it's more structured than cominerce. Then we have a goal and literally translated naked uh, wine. It's similar to Lachano, but it's triple aerated. First aeration is outside on the rainy day because there is too much oxygen into the, into the air, which is important for this production. And then after the month, it's the second and after the, the, the third month is the third aeration and could be done uh, and should be done actually into the very cold uh, winter and to need to be sunny day. I really don't know why, but this is the something which help about this production or about this style of wine. And this wine is considered as a uh, well-structured wine, a wine which can uh, uh, actually age for a longer period wine also with fruitiness but can age into the into the barrels and into the bottles bottles as well so when we're talking about modern uh wine making we start uh, shortly about the vineyards it's similar like uh, all modern vineyards so we are all the time looking for new vineyards researching floral selection then we uh we have a new approach to choosing the, to exploring and choosing the terrors which uh, are uh, more fitable more suitable for the grape variety then uh, and we have a, a lot of research about the, the the soils which is also considered as a, important for using the grape varieties uh, the proper grape variety then we have a rootstocks uh, we made some uh, researching about the rootstocks and we find pretty much the impact of the rootstocks on the phenolic components and anthocyanins into the granets. Uh, then we have uh, experimenting with new grape varieties, uh, more coming uh, grape varieties from Southern Rhone, 
usually because we have some similarity with this wine region. We try with less inter intervention in vineyards, moving to organic production selection during the harvest, picking the uh, grapes uh, in several triads, tri tri uh, picking the grapes for premium, for premium wines and then make another harvest and so on. In the winery, there's modern production. It's using the cutting edge technology, rigorous control to all process, pulling the grapes, grape selection, optical selection of grapes or berries, uh, cryomaceration so or the cooler te temperature, extracting the, the aromas and flavors from the wines, Temperature regulated fermentation, yeast selection, selection the proper yeast for each grape variety, for style of wine, what we want to achieve. So we have processes in Elevage, we have a betonage, surly, no lactic fermentation. So we have very uh, oxygen, very important uh, process, oxygen, oxygen control. Then in maturation process, we use the uh, oak, mostly French, American, Slavonian, but as well as Macedonian oak is also used into the uh, maturation process. We come back to the cement tanks uh, because cement, we consider it that it can offer something that oak and stainless steel cannot offer. And we try more with bottle aging of the more well-structured wine and as well updating the archives and uh, come back uh, from time to time, making the vertical degustation of, uh, uh, of wines and uh, uh, connect, uh, collecting this information and using for further production. Maybe I, not maybe, I'm sure that I'm missing a lot of processes that, that is uh, encompass the modern wine production, but uh, this is what is usual uh, done here. Wine characteristics about the Vranets, as you can see on the, uh, we have a very large core here and it's dark, almost, almost black. That is why it's calling uh, Vranets. Uh, it's very highly concentrated and if you see on the rim, it's very tiny rim. So we have a very, very good extraction here in extracts uh, here in, uh, in this wine. All the Sians are moving five milligrams per liter higher than five milligrams. And we also have a highest level of resveratrol, which is antioxidants and make this Vranets very healthy, uh, let's say wine. It's not the healthiest wine in the world, but uh, can be uh, close to the grape varieties uh, like uh, Malbec or maybe Cabernet Sauvignon. And this is exactly where the Vranets uh, not defined. But what is uh, also important is when it's young, it's a purple with purple rim and uh, see 2018 and in 2011 when it's old, they have a little bit garnet, but the mostly changed to the deep ruby color. So these uh, differences in color and intensity can be, can uh, give us information about the uh, about the youngness, the oldness, actually, of the of the of the Vranets. and this 2011 was still fruity, which means that 10 years we don't find here any tertiary notes yet. So the Vranets has a very good potential for aging. Uh, one characteristics about the taste: we we have a high acidity, high tannins full body wine and with long and pleasant finish, uh, which it's, as you can see, it's almost everything on high, but it's you know, very, with the good quality wines, it, with very good balance and very good harmonious uh, order of flavors. And when we're talking about the primary, uh, primary notes, aromas, we can find the black cherry, overripe salt cherry, pomegranate, black currant. In the hot vintages, we can find the blueberry jam, some violets, floral aromas, and some dry siege. Uh, secondary and tertiary aroma will go in direction of offering prawn, vanilla from oak, chocolate, sweet tobacco, 
and leather. So if you see all these aromas, you can think probably that it is aromatic grape variety. Actually, it's not. You can find some part of these aromas and flavors in some of of uh, Varanis. Not in not all these aromas can be found in in Varanis to be so complex. Um, and we come at the end, uh, almost just to mention about the, the wine styles. Uh, yesterday we have uh, run its whole day, 5th of October, and we have opportunity to taste uh, some small group, we have opportunity to taste some uh, run its of several produ producers here in uh, North Macedonia. Uh, when we talk about the Montenegrin style and Macedonian style, style I always like easiest to explain something like Syrah and Shiraz. Let's say Syrah from France, uh, it's more elegant, more spicy than Shiraz from Australia, offer more, uh, more fruity, more concentrate, more bolded uh, reds. Uh, when, I, when we compare Montenegro style and non Macedonian style of brownies, we can use the, the same terms. Uh, when we go deeper to the Macedonian style of wines, the wines which come from the more in continental influential offer more high acidity, more refreshing, more vivid uh, wines, more fruity wines, uh, let's say, and uh, the wines which come from the southern part uh, with under more influence of the Mediterranean climate, they offer more jammy, uh, jammy, jammy notes, uh, fruity notes, but higher concentration, uh, higher tannins, uh, more powerful, more alcohol, uh, but usually well integrated alcohol. So, so we can use for granites the following terms: bold, bolded, powerful, concentrate, fruity, expressive, warmly alcoholic, intensive, opulent, complex, velvety, tannic, coolant, harmonious, temperamental, vivid and long lasting as it promised land of the eternal sun. Okay, that will be all of this presentation. And I would like to thank you and uh, make a cheers with you. And if you have any questions, I'm here to, to answer. Thank you, Zvanko. Um, yes, there's a few questions, so I'll ask those to you now, if that's okay. While you while you enjoy your wine, you're allowed a sip of your wine first. <laughs> um, so there's a couple about the sort of Appalachian PDO system, and it asked, is Tikves a WCGO or a, or a WCO? Uh, about the Appalachian, where the Tikves is uh, actually its part, we are, we are working on, on the registration actually for, for this, but Tikvesh will, will come as the wineries who has uh, vineyards there. Uh, we'll, we'll go to the, to the wines with uh, protected and guaranteed uh, origin, let's say. I will go back to the classification if, you, if it's uh, in second. Yeah, because there was that question and there was also one that asked um, yeah, you know, who, who determines, how do you determine the difference between mm -hmm. the, how do you determine the difference between the WCO and the WCBG, uh, WCGO? Is it a bit like Italy? Is it a bit like DOC and DOCG? Yes, 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 yes. It's, it's, it's uh, sim similar like Italy, but it's not so, um, so, so, precisely determinate like like in Italy it's still uh, we are working in the in the in the law for for make the determination of this uh, we of these uh, two appellations uh, or classification for for the wines so I'm not sure I, I think that that we also have a blind tasting for VCGO uh, like in DOC, uh, DOCG in Italy so, uh, the, but uh, maybe about the great varieties, we have a wider, uh, wider range of the great varieties, which we can use for, for the wines uh, with this uh, classification. Yep. Thank you. Um, another question about the varieties. You mentioned it was, it was sometimes blended. So someone asked uh, what varieties has it been blended with? 
Um, and just what other grape varieties as well as another question that's linked uh, are cultivated in North Macedonia alongside Bernic? Yes, uh, this presentation it's actually more focused on the brownies, but yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, of course, we have, uh, actually in Macedonia, we have uh, one, only one uh, ingenious, uh, ingenious grape variety, it's uh, Stanushina, or we call here Macedonian girl, it's very, very elegant wines. Uh, it's produced uh, with silky tannins and could be uh, red wines, could be white wine and uh, as well the rosé. The, the best results are offering with the rosé wine. Uh, I didn't file Stanushina into the blend uh, with uh, Vranets, but under the traditional uh, method of winemaking, uh, it's very possible to find Stanushina, Prokupets and uh, together with Vranets or maybe Kratosia, Kadarka, and some some other great varieties uh, in, uh, in in production with the blends. When we're talking about the commercial blends and commercial wineries, they usually uh, use uh, in blends uh, Kratosia. Ah, this is Infantil or Primitivo, the same. I mean, great variety. And uh, actually, we have the, the most awarded wine uh, from uh, which come from Tikvish winery from the Barova Perar. And it's Domain Baro, actually, the name of this wine. It's a blend of uh, uh, Kratosia and uh, Vranets. Uh, so the, this can be considered, let's say, like a blend, uh, like a GSM in the Rhone. Uh, it would be Kratosia and uh, Vranets here in commercial production. But also, of course, Bordeaux uh, blends are usually Cabernet and Merlot, fit well with Vranets. Now, uh, last five years, uh, it's usually can be see the Syrah uh, and Vranets in combination to the blend. Uh, Vranets fit very well with, with some other grape varieties because can offer the, the freshness, also can offer the, 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 the structure, the improve the structure of the wine and can offer in the meat, uh, let's say, uh, about in the, into the blend. Brilliant, thank you. Um, just a couple more. This one, this one might be a little bit trickier to answer, but um, what are the challenges and opportunities um, that you see in the marketing and selling of wine from North Macedonia in the future? Okay. Um, <laughs> opportunity. Now we're doing, a, I think, a good marketing. Uh, about uh, selling the wines. We are not selling at the moment, but we are promoting the, the grape variety, we're promoting the new wine region, because uh, uh, actually the, the wine lovers and the, the consumers, uh, they have also uh, already favorite wines, but uh, they uh, all the time uh, looking to taste uh, and to, to, to meet some other grape varieties, some new exotic uh, wine regions. And uh, here I see for the start, for the beginning, something which will be catchy for the new consumers and new, uh, let's say, marketing approach for, for increasing the, the selling of the wines and promoting the, the wine region. Uh, and, uh, well, this will be for, for, for beginning, I think, is enough. Thank you. Um, just a couple more, so some people asking, um depending where they're based um if they can get hold of some examples so do you know any particular producers that are available in the the usa um <laughs> i didn't know i said your question sorry no. yeah. um, do you know any particular rannick wines that are available in the usa in america oh. no but okay. if it, no problem i i can make a list very uh quickly after this uh, presentation and maybe until tomorrow I will send to, I don't know, in, on, the, <laughs> on the post of, the, of this uh, presentation, just uh, where, where the, the consumers can, can find uh, actually the Vranets and some other Macedon North Macedonian, Macedonian wines. Yeah, well, if you um, also if you flick to the end of the presentation, we had a slide with all your you had your Facebook page. Perhaps they could contact you there yeah. if they want to ask. <laughs> but okay. I, because I don't know where all the wines available. But a few people are ask, answering in the chat, so I'm sure we can find some. Okay, um, great. Thank you. Thank you for the, for the, <laughs> yeah. the guest yeah. who knows. 
Um, so yes, and then Hallgarten is the importer in the UK, so uh, you can find yeah. some of the wines there. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, so a wine search is always really useful if you type in a variety. I'm sure we'll have lots of information. Yeah. Good. And then um, one final question then I think that we've got is um, what is the approach to choosing the terroirs that are suitable? I'm not sure. What is the approach to choosing the, the terroir? Uh, actually, it's, uh, yeah, it's the pedological uh, science uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, when we're talking about the terrar, it's I, I jumped uh, to the soil, but uh, it's uh, actually collecting all the characteristics of which mean the word terrar. This is the climate aspect, the soil, uh, grape variety, exposition, orientation, human who produced these uh, these grapes, and. Uh, approach is very serious because uh, from uh, from the past uh, a lot of grape varieties are actually planted uh, on the let's say not so so well not so good uh, terrars and now let's say for example we have a riesling but it's planted at very hot uh, uh, places and uh, it's not offering what riesling can offer but uh, now the approach is more more serious and more uh, scientific there there every aspects are considered and uh, after that is decide which uh, grape variety will we plant so we have a very uh, new plants i think that now it was 700 uh, 70 hectares uh, which will be new planted uh, start with new some new grape varieties and that will be your two, the answer let's see brilliant yep. well, i think that's all the questions that i made a note of i think anything else you answered as you went along with your very comprehensive presentation so thank you so much again this will be um going up on our on our youtube channel so you can watch it back if you missed anything um and and go into Renaissance in some more details so thank you so much for your time Zonko and thank you, um, Lydia, as well. yes hopefully yes. you can come and do a tasting in person that we did have scheduled and uh, once once travel restrictions are a little bit uh, yeah we will be <laughs> very glad to come in London and make wine one great wine tasting of Branis or some other great varieties and wines from here exactly well thank thank you so much <laughs>